Climate change is just too much. There's never any good news. Only graphs that get more and more red and angry. Almost every year breaks some horrible record, from the harshest heat waves to the most rapid glacier melt. It's endless and relentless. We've known for decades that rapid climate change is being caused by the release of greenhouse gases. But instead of reducing them, in 2019 the world was emitting 50% more CO2 than in the year 2000. And emissions are still rising. Why is that? Why is it so hard to just stop emitting these gases? The idea that Republicans dragging Democrats to the right doesn't match with the increasingly popular progressive policies championed by some Democrats? Wait, what? I mean, socialized medicine has been championed by some Democrats for a very long time. Just like carbon tax uh, or, or uh, cap and trade was actually an idea that Republicans had advanced. Uh, one of the more famous ones being John fucking McCain before he, before he went up against Barack Obama. These guys switch around policies all the time. Members claiming that they care about progressive policies, but then don't act on those oh, desires is meaningless. Man, what you have to look at is whether there is progressive legislation that is truly improving the living conditions of American workers or just Americans in general. His name is Hassan. And here's the thing. <clears throat> America is certainly more progressive than a lot of the rest of the world when it comes to social policy. Some people get mad at me when I say this, but in a lot of other parts of the world, with the exception of like comparable OECD nations, especially like Scandinavian, Nordic countries, America is more progressive right socially uh, with its Don't legalization of gay LSD marriage level. and and even like having conversations about fucking uh, trans rights rather than being a, a gigantic fucking a turf in comparison to the rest of the third in comparison to the rest of the third world and numerous other countries america is absolutely more socially progressive than other places even when it comes to abortion <laughs> even when it comes to abortion women being able to have uh, access to abortion in depending on what part of the country you live in and not like fucking psychotic red states in the United States of America, you absolutely have a, a, a easier access to abortion than even some European countries. Okay. Now, having said that, here is the butt. This is a direct. It is a big butt. Pervert. America is absolutely one of the furthest right-wing countries on the fucking planet as far as our economic policies goes. As far as our taxes, as far as how little taxes um, uh, that wealthy people and corporations pay, as far as economic inequality goes, America is really bad. America is horrifically right-wing. We do not even have socialized medicine in this country. Most other comparable OECD nations have some form of universal health care coverage, either partially socialized or fully nationalized, like in the case of the national health care system in the UK. I when people system, say the I Overton window is water. shifting to the I left, so much from they constantly adventure. fucking Thank talk about asshole. social policies. When people say the Overton window is shifting to the right, they are talking about economic policies. Now, I'm sorry to say this. Maybe it's my privilege. If you ask so many people, they will probably point to that. But I think that social progress without economic progress is fucking bullshit. It normalizes um, living conditions for marginalized communities only in the higher rungs of society. So wealthy gays get to live and coexist around wealthy straights. But when 
there is no economic distribution that is egalitarian as a goal, maybe not egalitarian completely, but as a goal to reach at least uh, some semblance of equality of opportunity, then poor gays still get fucked over across the board. Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. Love you. Hey, so that's my take. To chat hassle. There are still... Um, there are still carve-outs that you can talk about, and social progress overall is, is still a good thing. I, you will never hear me shit on that. I think that um, normalizing uh, different sexualities is, is incredibly important. I think um, striving for a uh, more representative culture this is a deranged that then reflects earth. a more representative politics that makes it easier to combat stereotypes against black people, for example, or brown people, that's good. It's not a bad thing. But if it's the only thing, oh, you're such a then big, after a fucking while, son. it makes one think, maybe this is just a distraction. Stop saying stunlock when I'm fucking popping off on a good rant, why the fuck do you come here if you don't want to hear me endlessly pontificate on these sorts of issues? Like, why are you here? Are you here to just fucking spam shit in the chat and watch uh, videos that you can watch by yourself? God fucking damn it, dude. Actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to hit the 6 second ad break here. If you don't want to see an ad, you can subscribe. That's one way to uh, avoid seeing ads. But uh, it's the top of the hour, so I'm going to run an ad and then I'm going to play this video. Uh -uh. This is a deranged pervert. 12,000 likes and 630 retweets. And yet, this is a deranged perfect. nothing from Tim Pool. The American people are tired of women. This is a deranged pervert. The American people are tired Americans can easily move to Europe, though. As I'm American, you is. can study in Germany, Iceland, Norway, Slovenia. And then after you study there, you can get residency and still vote in the United States, but live in Europe. So you'll get all the benefits Wars of socialized health care, better Wars unemployment benefits and worker Wars rights, etc. What? What is this argument? It's like... Oh, you're such a big man, Hassan. It should offer you some fucking reflection if I don't even know if you were making an argument or not, but like it is really remarkable that like whores in this house instead of whores in this house. there's some whores in this house. instead of changing the the conditions that we live in, if you're privileged enough, just like move to a different country, dude, come on, dude, come on, just move to a different country oh, you're such if a you big want man Hassan simulation of a nuclear blast it has been two. What the fuck? In a major city? This is some freak shit. What TV shows are you watching right now? I'm watching Midwestern pornography. Fargo. About how hot women in the Midwest are. Our collective CO2 emissions can be expressed as a product of four factors and their relationship with each other. Two of them explain why worldwide CO2 emissions are still rising, and two explain how we can stop that. Population a lot size, of economic growth, energy intensity, and emissions per energy unit produced. Number one, population size. People need food, homes, and clothing. 
and they demand luxury products from iPhones to $1 cheeseburgers. More people, higher CO2 emissions. It's a very simple equation. The global population is growing and according to the UN, it will level off at about 11 billion in 2100, which is 40% more than today. The only way to slow down this growth is investment in healthcare and access to contraception and education in developing countries. But even with massive investment, it will take a few decades for the effects of lower birth rates to manifest themselves. So the global population will keep growing for the foreseeable future, and as a consequence, global CO2 emissions will rise over the next few decades. Number two, growth or getting richer. But it's not just about our numbers. The richer and more developed we are, the more emissions our lifestyle produces. A programmer in the US has a higher CO2 footprint than 54. Guys, please stop saying eco fascism, dude. It's fucking Korgazogs. Like, some whores in this house. There's some whores are you in this insane? House. They're like neoliberal to like social demo democracy adjacent uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recipients. Like, they're not fucking eco-fascist Malthusians who are who are advocating to wipe out half the fucking population. Eco-fascism dictates. Uh, eco-fascism is about killing fucking poor people so that the remainder of the resources that that rich people already take up most of uh, can be distributed amongst the rich people. Okay, that's eco-fascism. These guys literally make the opposite argument by admitting. By, by admitting that, like, wealthy, richer countries are the ones who are uh, taking up a tremendous amount of resources. Farmers in Uganda. The world's wealth is growing almost everywhere. And although it's far from evenly distributed, economic growth has led to the highest standards of living and the largest reduction in extreme poverty in human history. Growth has become the dominant mantra of the world's economies, no matter what kind of political system they have. It's unlikely that rich countries will give up the concept of growth anytime soon. But even if they were to, developing countries want to become rich too. For billions of people, the end of growth would probably mean staying poor, and so developing countries are not willing to stop growing their economies. All in all, we can be sure that growth as a guiding economic ideology is not going to go away anytime soon. More countries and their citizens around the world will grow and become richer, while the rich economies will continue to grow their wealth. There are some signs that growth can be decoupled from CO2 emissions, but we're not close to that yet. As a consequence of this growth, CO2 emissions will rise. Okay, so far we've learned that because of population growth and economic growth, humanity's CO2 emissions will increase. Which is the opposite of what should be happening. We need to slow, peak, and then reduce annual emissions. Listen, motherfucker, if you want to depopulate the third world while all of you guys are fucking crying in here, if you truly want to depopulate the third world, you can't do it by killing them, literally. You do it by uplifting them so that they too are in a position where they can just like, Stop fucking and like going to college and and uh, you know toiling away endlessly with their jobs. Okay, that's the the best way to stop. The best way to stop fucking people from reproducing like rabbits is literally increasing their level of affluence, improving their material conditions. Emissions. The next two factors describe how we can actually do this. Number three, energy intensity. Energy intensity describes how efficiently we use energy. A street food vendor in rural Brazil might burn coal to cook, while a street food vendor in France might use an induction stove powered by nuclear energy. The latter is way more efficient. The more efficient something is, the less energy we need to do something, be it powering a metropolitan area or grilling a kebab. So making our technology more efficient and coming up with more efficient ways to organize our societies is one of the most important ways to reduce the modern world's CO2 dependency. This can mean everything. Incredibly important, the kebab marketplace. From reducing power consumption with AI, the electrification of the transportation and industrial sectors, or sustainable concrete production. 
the opportunities for improvement are almost limitless and human ingenuity can run wild. But we know that increasing efficiency alone will not be enough, mostly for three reasons. One, direct rebound effects. This means that once something becomes more efficient, it's used more, and so overall the increased efficiency does not lead to a reduction as impressive as you would first think. Or worse, sometimes more efficiency makes humans not use less of a resource, but more of it. When planes became more fuel efficient, ticket prices decreased and more people started to travel by plane. So making things more efficient does not automatically mean less energy use in total. It might have the opposite effect. 2. Indirect rebound effects Sometimes when you save money on a thing that's become more efficient, you might spend it elsewhere. For example, if you buy a more fuel... I have an idea. Have you guys thought about that? A lot of people say Hasanabi is one of the biggest uh, leftist content creators on the internet, but what they fail to recognize is I'm actually the biggest anarcho-primitivist content creator on the internet. Yeah. Welcome to the Hasanabi broadcast where you can have a random chimp event. A random chimp incident. Where we advocate to return to Monka fuel efficient car you save money on fuel and end up with extra funds in your bank account that you might spend on a vacation and take a flight with so in the end you might actually emit more co2 despite getting a more efficient car three and lastly the more you once i'm done with this food i'm gonna do the crazy p.o box with the massive box behind me so get excited for that Optimize for efficiency, the harder and more expensive it becomes to get more efficient. So over time, the return on investment slows down. And with many technologies, we are already pretty efficient. But regardless of how efficient we make our economies, as long as we need at least some energy, we will have emissions. Efficiency alone won't create a zero carbon world. This brings us to our last factor. Number four, CO2 emissions per energy unit used, or our global carbon footprint. Humanity's global carbon footprint is the CO2 released per energy unit generated. For example, coal plants release much, much more CO2 than solar power per unit of energy. This relationship is... Fake news, they don't talk about clean coal. I'm bringing it back. Donald Trump. Donald Trump bought it back. These Germans, they don't want to talk about it because they're socialists. National socialist. They don't want to do nationalism. I want to do nationalism. I want to do socialism. I don't want to do socialism. Crystal clear. The more fossil fuels we burn, the higher our CO2 output. Fossil fuels are the greatest lever humanity has right now. Of course, it's impossible to shut down coal and oil overnight without throwing society into chaos. But the reality is that we're not doing nearly enough to keep fossil fuels in the ground and use lower carbon alternatives. We need to do two things to speed the transition away from fossil fuels. First, we need to use the real leverage we have today with today's technology. There are a lot of things we can do extremely quickly. We can leave nuclear power plants online. For example, one direct. thing that we can do is frack but listen to the scientists while we are doing the fracking. So that when they tell us we shouldn't do fracking, we ignore them. Whores in this but house. There's some the fundamental in this part house. of this, in this the key part, the key difference is we will listen to the scientists before we ignore them, rather than the other side that says the scientists are lame and don't even Excuse listen to me. them to begin with. Sorry. I'm out of this control. is incredibly important for, for you to understand. We will listen off -topic, to the scientists in this of only to then ignore them and do whatever the fuck we want anyway. 
we also have Which crazy people. One could make the argument is literally worse because we knew that the death and destruction was upon us, and yet we ignored uh, the warnings. Longer. We can cut subsidies to the fossil fuel industry and funnel them into renewables. We can price carbon emissions harshly and increase the price each year to create strong incentives for the world's industries to transition. We can enforce strict standards for energy efficiency and for any type of new construction. We can phase out fossil fuel vehicles. We could nationalize our extraction industries and spend every dollar of profit in R&D for maximizing renewable energy investments or renewable energy uh, initiatives. Um, I love, yeah, I, I love these. I love these Kurz Gazak's videos because, like, it's always like, here are all of the cool things that we can do that are all, of course, never going to happen under capitalism. Instead, you're going to have, you know, cap and trade, more cap and trade, and also a, uh, a, a, uh, you know, unilateral agreement that you have no power to enforce whatsoever, but it's just a, just a pinky promise, you know? that we will fucking cry about when uh, Donald Trump pulls out. How do you plan to do that without a mass workers party? Do you think the Democratic Party is going to nationalize shit? Dude, I understand that. I'm not in disagreement with you. I think that the best way to do that is through using the pre-existing, using the pre-existing uh, infrastructure built before us by pressuring or either uh, more successfully taking over the Democratic Party. Next, we also need to invent... But how do you fucking plan on doing that by what? Voting for Gloria Lariva? Like, shut the fuck up. Your argument is so dumb. And better just like any transition happened in history yeah except all the times when there was a violent transfer of power they've also been demonstrable failure so what the fuck is your counter oh dude it's never happened so it never will happen i think is probably even more idiotic than the argument you're making which is oh when it happened the way i wanted it to happen it was violent and it failed but this time it'll be better and it won't actually be like that I would rather hold on to hope. I would rather hold on to hope that uh, something could happen that hasn't happened before rather than hoping that something that has happened in the past will happen again. Technology. Without new technologies and innovation, it will be impossible to achieve a zero CO2 emission world, be it from technologies like... Nice a historical view of communism. Dude, listen... I'm not going to fucking sit here and, and relitigate the exact same thing I've talked about a million fucking times, which is the reason why people say I'm a goddamn tanky, because I say that, like, of course, industrialization happening over the course of fucking 400 years in the Western world is a consequence of slavery uh, with so much bloodshed in the form of colonization is going to look really fucking bad when you accelerate that into literally 50 fucking years as you turn an, ag an agrarian society of potato farmers into a, an industrial powerhouse that was able to fucking outcompete the United States in, uh, like, space travel. Of course, when you fucking take what the Western world did in 400 years and, like, literally shove it into, like, 40 or 50, then it's gonna look really fucking violent in comparison. And I'm, what I'm referencing is the USSR. But... But having said that, it still doesn't change the reality that it was still a demonstrable failure even before we talk about Western imperialism, even before we talk about capitalist nations constantly subverting uh, plots that, uh, that the USSR may or may not have had in, I guess, uh, becoming a hegemonic power. Capture or a new generation of nuclear power plants to new batteries that revolutionize the energy storage from renewables. But innovation takes time, years and decades, and we don't have this time. Every year we keep adding more carbon to the atmosphere. This means we can't keep relying on innovation alone. 
we need to find ways to reduce emissions today while we invent what we will need in the future. The less fossil fuel we burn over the next few years, the more time we give innovation to catch up. The more low-carbon energy infrastructure we build today, the more we can compensate for economic growth and the people born today. The more coal power plants in construction we stop from being finished, the more CO2 we save. Neither innovation nor the alternatives we're using today alone can solve rapid climate change. But innovation, together with a decisive move away from fossil fuels where it's possible today, could do it. Solving climate change will be complicated. We have to account for the needs of billions of people and the reality that right now, society runs mostly on fossil fuels. This will not change overnight, but it needs to change as quickly as possible. And it is still very much possible. We'll look at different aspects of climate change and how to solve it in more videos. Premier Trump, thank you for giving me a fantastic head for last four years. How about you His stop eating so much meat? Hashan. Um, tell that to your mom every time she gives me dome. Oh, fuck. Got him. God damn. Why did you travel all the way into this chat to get fucking owned, dude? Oh!